Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, everybody. We hope everybody's been having a great day, and we hope everybody's chapter has been great thus far. I'm your brother, Zachua, and this is your brother, Kasafo. Um, We do have a great lesson for everybody. Still in the end time lessons, um, the afflictions after the 1260 days. For anybody who isn't uh, savvy as to what the 1260 days is, it's the time um, that was spoken of in Daniel and in Revelations 11, um, it is a time period during the beast going into the reign of the false prophet at the 1274 days after the daily sacrifice was taken away and the abomination of desolation was set up, um, spoken of in Daniel, so that everybody can understand this time period that we're talking about. Now, Casa, a lot of people are going to ask you. That this time period after the 1260 days, is that considered the time of Jacob's trouble? The time period of the 1260 days is going to be during Jacob's trouble because Jacob's trouble is going to commence when the beast gets his authority for 1274 days, which is the 42 months that Revelations 13 and Revelation 11 talk about. So this preaching will happen within the time of Jacob's trouble. All right. So just needful for everybody, um, the 1260 days, the two witnesses will have already preached during the 1260 days, during the time of the beast reign. And this is the time period afterwards. Okay. Um, Brother Kasafo, you have any updates yeah. you want to give anybody before we get started? And uh, you want to give that membership um, speech? Yes, uh, we're still taking in members. Please send an email to HebrewReaders at gmail.com if you're interested. We'll send you all the information. And um, just just to congregate with us, uh, just to be more intimate with us, um, have more connection with us, and also get the updates and the uh, different perks that you get of being a member. So uh, if you're interested, Please send us an email. Right. Now, with the lesson, the gospel will be preached for the 1260 days. Can you read Revelations 11 and 3, please? Sure. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. And it will be a time of trouble, evidently. After the elect men of Israel are refined and the daughters of Zion washed by the end of the 1260 days of preaching by the two witnesses, things will get worse after that when the end comes. Can you read Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, please? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The beast will kill the two witnesses after they have preached those 1260 days revelations 11 verse 7 to 11 please uh, revelations chapter 11 verse 7 and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them now this is during the 14 days time frame left during the beast's authority of 1274 days, which is the 42 months. Continue, please. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The two of them will be killed in America. Continue, please. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. The world will rejoice at this. Continue, please. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Elohim entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. They shall arise from the dead three and a half days after they are killed during those 14 days that the beast has left. The tribulation will still be happening around the world. The world war, as we discussed in the last lesson, and the sinners of the Gentiles using violence against Israel and transgression against Jacob. Believers will be fleeing society 
And now that the gospel has gone out, there will be nothing to say to anyone concerning righteousness. Can you read Amos chapter 5, verse 13, please? Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. People will notice the chaos and seek the truth, but won't be able to find the truth in the evil time because it's too late. Can you read Amos chapter 8, verse 11 to 12, please? Behold, the days come, says the Lord Ahia, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Ahia. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro, and seek the word of Ahia, and shall not find it. That's how you know this is after the gospel is preached to the world, because people will look everywhere for the word, but won't find it. Whereas during the 1260 days of preaching the gospel, the gospel went out to all the world. It's going to be very troublesome after the preaching. Let's see what the word of the Lord is for these times to come after the preaching has gone out. Can you read 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 35 to 48, please? Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 35. Hear now these things to understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the Elohims of whom the Lord spake. Behold, the plagues draw nigh, and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth great pains come past her womb. Which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O my people, hear my word. Make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Believers will be on the move with no certain dwelling place as pilgrims. Continue, please. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth, as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it. And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. Forsaking business ventures and projects to get to safety will be the motive. Continue, please. He that soweth, as if he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vineyard, as he that shall not gather the grapes. Forsaken jobs to get to safety. Continue, please. They that marry, as they that shall get no children. And they that marry not, as the widowers. The prophecy of Isaiah 4 and 1 would have been fulfilled during the 1260 days, wherein the woman would marry um, a man and beget children by him. So after the 1260th day, the righteous won't be seeking to marry or trying to get children because it's the time to flee society. Lord willing, we be a part of this group. Now, why will they be so urgent to go and get out of society after the time of the preaching? Let's find out. Continue, please. Uh, second Ezra chapter 16, verse 45. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. Lord willing, we be a part of this group and we see why we have to flee. We will have to flee society for our children not to be taken from us and not to be put in captivity ourselves. While unbelievers will continue marrying, as in the days of Noah, staying in the oppressing society, be getting their children in captivity and famine. The fear of Allah is instrumental in these times to come. Can you read 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 67 to 76, please? 2nd uh, Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Behold, Allah himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall Allah lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Bringing forth fruits worthy of repentance is instrumental for deliverance. Continue, please. For behold, 
The burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you, and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. People will get caught in the way trying to flee, and will be tempted with worldly feast sacrifices. Continue, please. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach, and trodden underfoot. Eating things offered to idols will get us killed in these times to come. Continue, please. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. That's why they will be as pilgrims on the earth trying to stay off the radar to get to the wilderness. Continue, please. They shall be like madmen, sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. People will be forced to leave for their life's sake. Continue, please. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, and I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Allah is your guide. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Allah Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So we see how hard things will be for the remaining time in the world. And all we can depend on is belief in Allah and keeping his commandments and precepts. The elect 144,000 will be sealed at some point, while the rest of the sinners of Israel will be destroyed with their households. Can you read Revelation 7, verse 1 to 4, please? Yes. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Elohim in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. As in the past, those who were sealed will be protected, but the unbelievers will fall in the times to come. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, so we can get an example from what was to understand what's coming, please. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 1. And he cried also in mine ear with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, with life toward the north, and every man a slaughterer weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with the rider's inkhorn by its side. And they went in, and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of Allah of Israel was going up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And Ahiah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said, In mine hearing, Go ye after them through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slight utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. The righteous men and women of the house of Israel that came together on one accord by the end of the 1260 days will flee society to get to the wilderness. 
Can you read Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2 to 6, please? Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. And in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that escape the Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion, and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day, and the shining of a flame and fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from storm and from rain. So you see the cloudy pillar and the pillar of fire will be back with them in the wilderness to protect them from the inclement weather. As they're getting to the wilderness, within the 14 days of that beast time that he has left, the ten horns will finish subduing the earth within the 42 months of the beast. Before that time's up, to have their one-hour rulership with the beast, as we discussed in the World War III lesson. There will come a falling away in these times. Can you read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, please? Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. At some point after the 1274th day, the false prophet will be revealed. There will be 61 days left to get to the 1335th day from the time when the beast time is up. Can you read 2 Ezra chapter 5, verse 4 and 6, please? But if the Most High grant thee to live, thou shalt see after the third trumpet that the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night, and the moon thrice in the day. And even he shall rule, whom they look not for to dwell upon the earth, and the fowl shall take their flight away together. Isaiah saw that he will do these things to understand that this ruler who people won't be looking for is referring to Satan in the form of the false prophet. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5, please? By his word he will cause the sun to rise by night, and the moon also he shall make to appear at the sixth hour. See how thankfully precepts help us understand. Let's see what else shall be happening, please, in that time. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 8 to 12, please. It's okay. Uh, second Ezra chapter 5, verse 8. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be off sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Women will beget children of the angels again. So the Nephilim will be back in the earth for everyone to see. Continue, please. And salt waters shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall wit hide itself, and understanding withdraw itself into her secret chamber. And shall be sought of many, and yet not be found. Then shall unrighteousness and inconsistency be multiplied upon the earth. One land also shall ask another, and say, Is righteousness that maketh a man righteous going through thee? And it shall say no. At the same time shall men hope, but nothing obtain. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. That will be after the gospel has gone out and the believers have fled society because no righteous people will be in society. As the world is experiencing the Lord's wrath, in his fury, he will gather Israel out from among the nations and bring them to the wilderness. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33 to 36, please? I thought this, saith the Lord, Elohim. Surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand 
and with a stressed out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord Elohim. Just as in the days of our fathers, there shall be miracles there in the wilderness. Can you read 2 Baruch chapter 29, verse 4 to 8, please? 2 Baruch chapter 29, verse 4. And Behemoth shall be revealed from his place, and Leviathan shall ascend from the sea. Those two great monsters. Those which I created on the fifth day of creation, and shall have kept until that time. And then they shall be for food for all that are left. The earth also shall yield its fruit ten thousand fold, and on each vine there shall be a thousand branches, and each branch shall produce a thousand clusters, and each cluster produce a thousand grapes, and each grape produce a core of wine. And those who have hungered shall rejoice. Moreover also, they shall behold marvels every day. For when shall go forth from before me to bring every morning the fragrance of aromatic fruits. And at the close of the day, clouds are still in the dew of health. And it shall come to pass at that self same time that the treasury of manna shall again descend from on high. And they will eat of it in those years, because these are they who have come to the consummation of time. That covenant that Israel went after Elohim seeking as we discussed in the World War III lesson, how the tribulations will cause them to go seek a covenant with Allah Hayyam. They shall be brought under in the wilderness. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 37 to 38, please? And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country wherein they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So there will be transgressors brought out too, yet they won't make it to the land of Israel. So we know if we find grace to make it to the wilderness, our journey still isn't over. These things have to be fulfilled before Christ returns. Can you read Second Baruch chapter 30 verse 1, please? And it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the advent of the Messiah is fulfilled, that he shall return in glory. And the Lord willing, in the next lesson, we'll discuss his return and his kingdom to come. Uh, anything, Zachary? All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, peace unto you, Brother Makala, Chinedu, uh, Shabbat Shalom, Johnny Mendez, peace, brother. Tell them, everybody. HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.